Section 8 of the Arabian Nights Entertainment, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Gesine. The Arabian Nights Entertainments, Volume 1, by Anonymous, translated by Dr. Jonathan Scott. Section 8. THE STORY OF THE HUSBAND AND THE PARROT A certain man had a beautiful wife, whom he loved so dearly that he could scarcely allow her to be out of his sight. One day, some urgent affairs obliging him to go from home, he went to a place where all sorts of birds were sold, and bought a parrot, which not only spoke well, but could also give an account of everything that was done in its presence. He brought it in a cage to his house, desired his wife to put it in his chamber, and to take care of it during his absence, and then departed. On his return, he questioned the parrot concerning what had passed while he was from home, and the bird told him such things as gave him occasion to upbraid his wife. She concluded some of her slaves had betrayed her, but all of them swore they had been faithful, and agreed that the parrot must have been the tell-tale. Upon this, the wife began to devise how she might remove her husband's jealousy, and at the same time revenge herself on the parrot. Her husband being gone another journey, she commanded a slave in the night-time to turn a hand-mill under the parrot's cage. She ordered another to sprinkle water, in resemblance of rain, over the cage, and a third to move a looking-glass backward and forward against the candle, before the parrot. The slaves spent a great part of the night in doing what their mistress desired them, and acquitted themselves with much skill. Next night the husband returned, and examined the parrot again about what had passed during his absence. The bird answered, "'Good master, the lightning, thunder, and rain so much disturbed me all night that I cannot tell how much I suffered.' The husband, who knew that there had been neither thunder, lightning, nor rain in the night, fancied that the parrot, not having spoken truth in this, might also have lied in the other relation, upon which he took it out of the cage, and threw it with so much force to the ground that he killed it. Yet afterwards he understood from his neighbours that the poor parrot had not deceived him in what it had stated in his wife's base conduct made him repent that he had killed it. When the Grecian king had finished the story of the parrot, he added, And you, vizier, because of the hatred you bear to the physician Duban, who never did you any injury, you would have cut him off, but I will beware, lest I should repent as the husband did after killing his parrot. The mischievous vizier was too desirous of effecting the ruin of the physician Duban to stop here. Sir, said he, the death of the parrot was but a trifle, and I believe his master did not mourn for him long. But why should your fear of wronging an innocent man hinder your putting this physician to death? Is it not sufficient justification that he is accused of a design against your life? When the business in question is to secure the life of a king, bare suspicion ought to pass for certainty, and it is better to sacrifice the innocent than to spare the guilty. But, sir, this is not a doubtful case. The physician Duban has certainly a mind to assassinate you. It is not envy which makes me his enemy. It is only my zeal, with my concern I have for preserving your majesty's life that makes me give you my advice in a matter of this importance. If the accusation be false, I deserve to be punished in the same manner as a vizier formerly was. What had the vizier done, demands the Grecian king, to deserve punishment? I will inform your majesty, said the vizier, if you will be pleased to hear me. End of section 8 The Story of the Husband and the Parrot
Recorded by Gesine in March 2007.